What does your operations staff look like? Do you have subcontractor teams or are they in-house? Uh, are they experienced or do they have no experience at all? Um, how's their pay, pay structure look? Is it high or is it low? You know, today we're gonna take a look at what my operations model looks like and what's worked for me over the years. Hey guys, welcome back to another video. My name is Brian and I help people improve their painting businesses. So today, uh, we're just going to take a look at what my operations model looks like and what it what has been working for me over the past couple of years. Um, I basically did a good job at optimizing uh, what was working, what wasn't. So um, basically, I'm just going to lay it all out on the table for you. <laughs> um, so yeah, I own a painting company. Um, what my operations model look, uh, looks like, it's a hybrid model. And um, I'll explain why I do that in a minute. But uh, what I mean by hybrid is it's half subcontractor, half in-house. So um, I was actually primarily uh, having like an in-house team. But um, the reason that I actually chose to actually add some subcontractor teams too is because um, uh, sales has never been difficult for me to capture a lot of work um, very quickly. So um, the issue that I kept running into was I kept selling a lot of work and then um, kept running into hiccups with my team and like the culture um, in-house. So um, there was routinely just work that I, you know, couldn't really get to by the end of the season. So um, adding subcontracting crews is allowing me and my, and my sales staff to keep selling gung-ho uh, and just maintain that. So like, in other words, we can produce a high volume of work um, and, and at the same time focus on like the culture for our in-house teams. So um, in other words, like that's kind of like how it's broken up. And uh, I think like the biggest thing that I kind of like that was a game changer uh, for our in-house teams at the very least was I started breaking them up by uh, lead painter and prep assistant. So um, in terms of the actual crew size for our paint crews, um, I typically keep them at two people, uh, it's three people maximum, um, depending on the job size. If it's like super huge, then I'll just uh, stack clusters of teams of two to three. But um, the reason that uh, I have like a prep person and a paint person is because it was just a lot more efficient and it's, uh, we seem to get stuff done a lot more efficiently that way because um, uh, we, we actually used to just have like highly skilled painters across the board on all teams and the issue that we kind of ran into with that was um, there would be like a lead painter who like really knows what they're doing and then with them would be like another uh, really good painter who would have um, the capability to be like an actual crew lead and they would kind of like bump heads a little bit. So uh, what we did was kind of just like split every every like really good painter up and pair them with a prep assistant. So uh, the reason that uh, that works again is because that prep assistant, like say it's an interior space uh, of a home, like like a bedroom, that prep person literally spends all of his time like taking wall plates off, taping everything, um, doing patchwork, laying drop sheets, staging paint, for the actual lead painter to start rolling and all that stuff um, and clean up. So that lead painter, um, they're the ones who are actually doing like all the mental strategy on like, how am I gonna produce this on time? Uh, basically like they're the ones just painting the entire time. So sure, uh, that prep person is gonna be painting from time to time, but primarily it's just prep. Um, and ever since we structured it that way, uh, on the sales end, we just add more prep time into that budget and uh, just give the prep guy more time to actually spend time taping everything off. And then our lead painter, they're able to crush budget uh, if we structure it that way. Um, actually, to kind of like back up a little bit, uh, a huge mistake that I uh, made a couple years ago was um, the crew sizes, in, like in terms of like me just putting a lot of people on one site. Uh, we actually had up to like six people on one site at a time and we kind of shied away from that because it just got really really busy and ultimately it was just kind of inefficient and uh, we eventually lost money on most of those jobs uh, that was happening on 
So a crew size of two, a three max. Um, again, it's just like a really high win rate in terms of producing that under budget. And then stacking that again with a subcontractor model, it's kind of like guaranteeing you know certain projections for uh, production every single month. And there's really no guessing game. We can take our time on hiring on the in-house staff. And all of those together across the board have basically been game changers for us um, in terms of like getting the most profitability that we can uh, while maintaining our in-house company culture. And then while having like a really nice uh, list of subcontracting teams, who are really good, by the way, um, that again, the profitability and like everything is kind of like streamlined pretty well right now. So yeah, that is my operations model in a nutshell. Um, it's been working for us really, really well. And there you have it. <laughs> I will catch you in the next video.